Hey gang, Jack Allaire here. Uh, I've been looking for a new game to play, specifically an MMO, and trying to find one that scratches that right itch. Now, some of them have some of the things I'm looking for, but none of them have everything I'm looking for. Uh, I've played most of the main ones, so I've played Ultima Online and EverQuest and uh, Anarchy Online, World of Warcraft, Secret World, City of Heroes. I miss you. Um, but there are a bunch of games out there that I've never heard of. So I decided to start looking into those and look into some of the, the, the ones that normally I would never even give a moment's notice to. I would just look at it and go, ugh. So I did a quick search on the PlayStation 4 and just said, all right, show me the free-to-play MMOs that are out there. And I came up with Onigiri, which Onigiri means rice ball. I was like, okay, great. I know what that means. And I was like, oh, you play as an Oni? I'm like, Oni? I know that word. I'm doing good so far. And I was like, oh, and they're, these, they're yokai. All right, I know yokai. So I know all of these words. And I started playing it and I'm like, okay, great. So character creation started out slightly disappointing in that there were no sliders. There was phase one, phase two, phase three, phase four, phase five. Hairstyle, one, two, three, four. And in a world where I've gotten kind of used to like, all right, do I want to be this tall or this tall or this tall or this tall or this tall? This was like, you have body type one, body type two, or body type three. I can't, can't make myself that skinny. The other part of character customization was much better. That was the clothing. There were many options, and as far as I could tell, I, it didn't matter what I picked. On top of that, not only was the outfit selectable, but I could change each piece of the outfit. So let's say if for whatever reason, like the, the outfit that I picked, I did not like the arm guard. The arm guard looked weird to me, so I swapped it out. Onigiri was released by Cyberstep in October of 2015, so when this is being recorded, just a, a few months ago. Now, it's uh, out for the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Windows, and I've been playing it all on the PlayStation 4, just to get a smooth frame of reference. The interface is designed for a PC, but they do a good job of moving it over to the PlayStation 4. It's much like uh, if anyone has played Final Fantasy XIV, uh, you have your action where you're moving around, and then you push a button, and it goes from action mode to menu mode. And then the controller, instead of moving the character around, it moves the pointer around. Very similar, works beautifully, not an issue at all. Controls are fantastic, except for a personal preference. If there is a dash ability, I want a button to dash. I do not want a double tap. I want to push a button, direction and a button, dash that way. But that's me. The combat is real time and it's a lot of fun. Uh, you can actually get used to seeing the wind-up of a character so that you know uh, if the weird little blue fuzzball thing is about to attack you or not. It rocks back and forth. You can get used to if it's gonna attack in a directional or if it's gonna do a cone attack. These are all things you can see and you can therefore dodge out of the way or just walk in my case because I don't like the delay. Anyways, combat basically works where you have an attack button, so you attack, 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 and then you have special things that you can do. Uh, each weapon that you have, and you can carry four at any time, will do different things. So if you've got a, you can have a spear that does fire damage, you can have a bow that does, I don't know, other stuff, and you can carry four at a time and switch them right in the middle of combat. So that's not a problem. Uh, it actually made me feel a lot better because I could go from running up and slashing thing with two swords to backing way up and shooting things with a bow when I noticed that the monsters just kind of stood there and did blah. Upgrading the weapons works a lot like the, the, the weapons in the 3DS Street Pass game Haunted Mansion in that you take weapon A and you take weapon B and you take weapon A and you feed it to weapon A and weapon or weapon B and weapon B gets stronger. 
And then if weapon A and weapon, if weapon B gets too strong, then you can use another weapon just like weapon B, and then you can unlock more upgrades. So easy enough to understand. I already had a frame of reference though, but that system could be a little weird for people who are just finding this game. The story is pretty standard for an RPG game. Uh, you are a hero, you're an Oni, and you are sent into training. There you discover a princess. There's a princess, there's a uh, guard who's sent to recover the princess. Uh, there's a, a, a wisecracking uh, merchant that travels around with you. And there's also, uh, as far as I made it, I just found the uh, lush cat lady who is naked or nearly naked most of the time. Oh, and the cat lady has two different color eyes. Speaking of clothing options, Here's where I stopped playing. I play MMOs for many different reasons. One of the reasons I play them is to see how awesome, sexy, cool, whatever, unassuming, I can make my character look. This is where it fails, in that what, by the time you're moving along and you're like, ah, I would really like something aside from my weapon to look new. It's not gonna. The weapon, weapons are gonna change, they're gonna look cooler, and your outfits are gonna, uh, they can, and you can kind of mix and match. The initial outfits you can buy right there at the first town, but in the second town that I went to, there were a handful of new options, and I mean literally like five or so, and then there were like eight hats. The way you unlock clothing is you go to this weird store and you basically play a capsule machine. And for those of you who have used capsule machines, there you put in money and then maybe the cool thing, the full outfit that you're looking for comes out, or maybe a weird little skill card comes out. The people who join you along the way in the story, uh, the, so the princess, the guard, the merchant, and the, the cat lady, as far as I made it, can all be partners. And partners join you in your fight. So they're basically like little minions that follow you around. Uh, I found the princess the most useful because she has a bow and doesn't run up to the, the boss and instantly die. Overall, I say the game has a lot of possibility. If you don't like switching your, your gear around and you actually like the combat aspects, it is real-time combat, it's a very action-type game, then this might be the one for you. But Onigiri, I'm gonna have to leave it behind and move on to something else. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and as always, play on!